Hey everyone, it's Jessica here from Fox's Knits. Thank you for joining me here today. As always, I am joining you from Mangafai in Northland, New Zealand, where I live. And Mangafai is a beautiful little seaside town about an hour's drive from Auckland. And I live here with my teenage daughter, my partner, and our rescue pets, Jasper the dog and Primrose the black cat. So today, I will be sharing with you a recently finished object. It is the Dyer Hat by Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Knitworks. And of course, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. So this is my chatting video, chatty nitty video channel um, where I share my finished objects, my monthly video podcast, as well as the occasional knitting know-how video. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Fox's blog and remember that I include for you any show notes or links to what I've mentioned within this episode such as patterns or products in the description below. So make sure that you check them out at the end of this video. So first off, if you are my dad, look away now please. Um, my dad has recently subscribed to my channel and while I absolutely love that he has done so. It is also incredibly annoying as he'll see things that I have made for him like this. And sorry dad, you can catch up on this episode later in the year. My dad and my stepmom, uh, they live in Herefordshire in the UK. So he always likes to see what I'm up to as we're quite far away from each other. But for everybody else, lean in, make a cup of tea and get yourself comfortable. Um, I have actually done that blog thing, that video blog thing where I've made a cup of tea because I'm filming about five episodes today and I'm getting parched. So here we've got some tea. I actually drink coffee, but I can't drink ca much caffeine after about two o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> which is such a dumb thing. So I have tea in the afternoon. That is too hot to drink. So as I mentioned, I recently finished the Dyer Hat by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks, and this was my first time doing colour work, which I know seems really silly. I've been knitting forever, but I've never really thought about doing colour work. So Caitlin has a few patterns that I really love the look of, and I wanted to try my hand at the colour work uh, on a smaller scale before attempting anything too much bigger. So here we go, I have a hat. I could probably put it on while I'm filming this actually, and then you can kind of see what it looks like. So why don't we just try that? There we go. I'm gonna really overheat in this, but, um, and it's too big for me. <laughs> My head is so small. Anyway, small but perfectly formed, anyway. So I really, really liked the look of this pattern. Um, it was simple and graphic and I could imagine it in quite a few different colorways. I will be making myself one as well in monochrome tones as really I'm pretty boring in the color space. I, I wear a lot of black. Um, I'm a designer. It's pretty much like our official uniform, our unofficial official uniform. So I'm going to take this off because I'm getting really hot. Uh, so I loved, loved making this. It was so much fun and really fast. This actually flew off my needles and I did it in just two evenings after doing possibly the most laziest gauge swatch I've ever done in my life. So, <laughs> which I always say that you should do a gauge swatch, but for this one, I just wanted to make sure that the um, width stitch count was working out and it was totally fine. So the pattern calls for yarns held together to make an eight ply, but for this I just used a DK weight uh, yarn combination. The mustard and black were from my stash, so I do apologize that I don't actually know what they are. Um, I think that they're like a superwash merino and the black one, the black one I've had it for such a long time, I don't even know what it is. It's probably a uh, acrylic type mix, but the blue, uh, is the same one that I used for the little marshmallow hat that I made for my nephew. Um, and I shared that in my August monthly video podcast. So I'll pop a link um, up there to see uh, so that you can see that if you want. Um, the yarn was um, by a new, the blue yarn was a, a New Zealand uh, company called um, Bandit. And it is in their color Escapade. I do remember that. That was pretty good. Um, and like I said, I do know that um, each of these other yarns would have been super super wash merino. I think that I got this mustard to make um, some baby knits, but it wasn't quite the right tone, so it probably would have been super wash. And I thought that it would be a really practical yarn to use for my dad. 
It's his 70th birthday this November and he mentioned that he'd like something handmade. So I am getting an absolute jump ahead to be able to send this to him uh, in a toasty care package for his birthday as he will be coming into a northern hemisphere winter so I'm sure that it will get lots of use. I didn't make too many modifications to this but I did make one mistake um, through here. Just one extra row of um, the center pattern. It's meant to be a little cross hatch but it's now looking like a cross. Um, but you can hardly tell and I think if I was to make this again I probably would do the decreases for the top closer together as in one row between the decrease rows rather than the two um, as I feel like this is a little bit pointy um, but it's kind of nice and slouchy on top. I'd prefer it to be a little closer to the crown of one's head. Uh, it might be the way that I knit, I don't know. Um, my hats always turn out this way. Is there something I'm doing wrong? I actually, I really don't care. It, I can just adjust the pattern. Anyway, uh, that's also why I added the pom-pom. I wasn't planning on adding it, but I looked, it just looked a bit odd without it. And um, if my dad doesn't like it, he can just snip it off. So the size that I made for this one was the medium. Um, and it's still uh, nice and stretchy. Ooh, there we go. Heaps of room, yeah. Uh, the cast on for the pattern didn't actually say what to use, but I decided to use a German, uh, a twisted German cast on to give it some stretch. There we go. Only because it's around your head, you know, you don't want to have it kind of too tight there. Uh, the cuff is just a one by one rib, but I think that a twisted rib in the future would give it just that little bit more structure. As I said before, this was my first time doing colour work. Uh, and it was interesting to juggle the colours of yarn and catch the floats. Um, I'll show you what it's like inside. You can see I've left the pom-pom strand on there. So yeah, so that's what it looks like inside. It's pretty bloody tidy. Anyway, well to me, I don't know, is that tidy? It feels like it's really tidy. Um, I'd really like to actually have a go at creating some of my own basic design patterns um, to use on hats, like some graphic designs um, and I might give that a go later on. Anyway, this was a fabulous pattern and something that a confident beginner would handle well, especially when you want to have a go at, you, at uh, creating something in colour work. It's made using circular needles and then swapping to double pointed needles or magic loop uh, to do the crown shaping. I chose DPNs as I loathe magic loop, which I have said before and I'll say it again. <laughs> so, but please don't yell at me for saying that. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. This is a super, super short video. Uh, let me know uh, what you think of this. What did, have you made it? What do you think? Do you think that you'll add this to your project list? I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> so thank you for being with me here again today for another one of my finished objects. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and make sure you subscribe to my channel for the next Fox's Knits episode. See you guys again soon. Happy knitting.